Remember I told you about that videotape that kills you when you watch it? Well, some people tried to copy the tape. It didn't protect them. All it did was change the tape. This time, it's a woman that appears, laughing again, seeing you through the screen. And then, when your phone rings, they tell you what you need to do. Please, get vaccinated. Seven days to get vaccinated. And if you refused, he sends her after you. Well, it looks like we are starting, <clears throat> at least, the coup files. And um, pretty interesting stuff, to say the least. I mean, it's uh, it's spicy. And uh, it's, just, it's just, how do I say, like, it's just so blackpilling. Like, you just keep seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. And it's like, ah. Uh, Hopefully we get some action, but this is a big story for Matt Taibbi uh, called the <laughs> FBI belly button. Uh, apparently this is uh, some spicy stuff. This looks like it's coof related and uh, how they classified various uh, coof testings and who got banned and what opinions you were allowed to have. Um, it seemed like if you had any questions about it, they were categorizing you as, as bots. This is nuts. Um, why is this doing that? Okay. So, uh, by the way, if you haven't yet, I do have a locals page. I would absolutely love, I'm going to put the link in the pinned comment below if you followed me on locals. Right now, between that and my telegram, it's the best way to for me to get a hold of you uh, when there's a live stream or there's breaking news that maybe it's late night or there's not a notification or something like that. It's obviously totally free to follow me over there. And um, I would uh, hope that you do. Now, by 2020, Twitter was struggling with the problem of public and private agencies bypassing them and going straight to the media with lists of suspect accounts. Because we saw, you know, how basically the FBI and all these people were uh, doing this. Like, oh, you don't want to do our bidding? Okay, well, we'll just go to BuzzFeed and we'll have a list of accounts. And then we'll just say, oh, these are evil baddies. And, um, you know, you, you should probably, and Twitter refuses to, to ban them. Um, and then in February, 2020, so obviously this jumps three years from the earlier Twitter files from today. In February, 2020, as COOF broke out, the Global Engagement Center, a fledgling analytic intelligence arms of the State Department, went to the media with a report called the disinformation apparatus taking advantage of the COOF. Here's the report. And of course, Mo Russia. Uh, it's just so weird. Like if, you know, every time they say like, okay, I'm sure that, you know, Russia is some, something to be concerned about. But like, if you remember, you know, that 2016 to 2020, it was like, oh my God, they can't possibly be doing all of this. Yet CNN and the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton and all these people kept expecting us to think that Russia was like some super powerful machine that was... Uh, uh, taking over the world, and we just could, we were helpless against them. All we could do is vote for Hillary Clinton in hopes of stopping them. They can't even seem to take over Ukraine. Anyway, uh, so they had this report. The GEC flagged accounts as, quote, Russian personas and proxies based on criteria like, quote, describing the coup as engineered, blaming research conducted at this particular lab or institute and attributing the appearance of it to the CIA. Now, obviously we know now a lot more than we knew then. I'm not sure what the, I have to be careful here. I'm not sure what the YouTube approved messaging is on this, but 
I will say that at least on Twitter and I think also on YouTube, you are not you are no longer being banned for sharing some of these possibilities, some of these ideas. It was so weird when they were banning people left and right. And it was like, you can't even question us. You have to believe it's, you know, it's, it's everywhere and it's all coming for you. Uh -huh. Well, you see here some of the reports, uh, exacerbation of general concerns, blaming Bill Gates. Interesting. Describing the coup as engineered, attributing it to, uh, you know, so these are things that the government told Twitter that you weren't allowed to say. And if you did say it, apparently you were Russian. The state also flagged accounts that retweeted news that Twitter banned the, uh, the popular U.S. Zero Hedge, claiming the episode, quote, led to another flurry of, quote, disinformation narratives Zero Hedge had done reporting, speculating that it had a specific origin. So you weren't even allowed to talk about Zero Hedge's ban. Why were they so? Golly, it's just such a dark day, you know, man. You know, you used to think at least some part of your government was out there looking out for you. But, I mean, they could not have possibly known. They could not have possibly known the answer to this. It's unlikely anyway, um, in terms of where the origin was. But they knew where it wasn't. Isn't that weird? How can you say, if you don't know where something came from, how can you say where it didn't come from? But that's exactly what, if that makes your brain hurt, it seems like exactly what they were doing. I guess that's my opinion. The GEC still led directly to stories like the AFP's headline, quote, Russia linked disinformation campaign led to the coup alarm, U.S. says, and a political story about how Russia, Chinese, and Iranian disinformation narratives echo one another. Boy, they sure like to use Politico, don't they? I wonder if there's some sympathetic journalist in there. Quote, you haven't made a Russia attribution in some time. When Clemson's media forensics have complained that Twitter hadn't made, quote, made a Russia attribution in some time, Trust and Safety Chief Yoel Roth said it was re revelatory of their motives. Again, so they're saying, so they're saying here, hey, you aren't labeling enough s stuff Russian as far as I understand it. God, this video, making this video makes me nervous. Make sure you follow me on Locals. <laughs> so, you know, like, it seems like we're getting into the thick of things that are, you know, non grata on this on this platform and others you know they're saying again he's saying well that you haven't attributed to russia in a while communist particularly revelatory of their motivations imo so even yoel roth knew something was up quote we're happy to work directly with you on this instead of nbc roth tried in vain to convince outside researchers like the clemson lab to check with them before publishing stories about foreign interference in the media. Twitter was also trying to reduce the number of agencies with access to Roth. If one of these folks are like House Homeland Committee and DHS, once we give them a direct contact with Yoel, they want to come back to him again and again, said policy director Carlos Mangi. Of course they do, because they got what they wanted, right? Because he would... I don't know why it's doing that. What word is muted? I'll have to check Twitter. Weird Twitter glitch. So, I mean, like, it's, it's certainly suspect, right? When the State Department and GEC remember, I'm sorry, when the State Department slash GEC remember, this was 2020 during the Trump administration, wanted to publicize a list of 5,500 accounts it claimed would amplify Amplified Chinese propaganda and disinformation about the coup, Twitter analysts were beside themselves. The GEC report appeared based on DHS data circulated earlier that week and included accounts that followed two or more Chinese diplomatic accounts just for following them. I follow a lot of people I don't agree with on Twitter. They reportedly ended up with a list of nearly 250,000 names long and included Canadian officials and a CNN account. Yowza. Nick Pickles at it again. I mean, are you joking?
That's absolutely insane. Roth saw GEC's move as an attempt by the GEC to use Intel from other agencies to insert themselves into the content moderation club that included Twitter, Facebook, the FBI, DHS, and others. The GEC was also agreeing, soon also agreeing to loop in Twitter before going public, but they were using a technique that had boxed in Twitter before. The delta between when they share material and when they go to press continues to be problematic, one comms official wrote. They're probably like, hey, Twitter, any comment? Hey, BuzzFeed, I got some clicks for you. We're going to keep applying pressure until Twitter does what we want. The episode led to a rare public disagreement between Twitter and state officials. You have Twitter disputes State Department claims, <clears throat> excuse me, that China coordinated disinformation. Wow. I, I mean, I guess we know that this was true based on what we've seen. It makes sense to push back on GEC participation in this forum. When the FBI informed Twitter, the GEC wanted to be included in the regular industry call between companies like Twitter and Facebook and the DHS and FBI, Twitter leaders balked at first, balked at first. I think it makes sense to push back on GEC. So even they're saying like, <coughs> excuse me, maybe we shouldn't keep giving more and more people access. Facebook, Google, and Twitter executives were united in oppositions to GEC's inclusion with ostensible reasons, including the GEC's mandate for offensive IO to promote American interests. I mean, I... Yikes. A deeper reason was the perception that unlike DHS and the FBI, which were apolitical, <laughs> as Roth put it, the GEC was political, which in Twitter ease appeared to be partisan code. I think they thought the FBI was less Trumpy, is one how, as wh how one former DOD official put it. After spending years rolling over Democratic Party requests for action on Russia-linked accounts, Twitter was suddenly playing tough. Why? Because as Roth put it, it would pose major risks to bring the GEC in, especially as the election heats up. Shout out to Matt Taibbi, by the way. If you use Twitter, you should definitely follow him. When senior lawyer Stacey, Stacia Card, Card, Cartier tried to argue against the GEC's inclusion to the FBI, the words resonated with Elvis, not Laura, i.e. with Elvis Chan, Agent Elvis Chen and not Foreign Influence Task Force Unit Chief Laura Demlo. Eventually, the FBI argued first to Facebook for compromise solution. Other USG agencies could participate in the industry calls, but the FBI and DHS would act as sole conduits. I mean, think about this. This is the government saying like, hey, we're going to take over your company now. And we're going to also bring some of our friends and they're going to take over your company. Roth reached out to Chan with concerns about letting the press happy GEC in, expressing hope they could keep a small circle of trust. Oh, interesting. State NSA and CIA Chan reassured him that this would be one-way channel and that the state slash GEC NSA and CIA have expressed interest in being allowed in a listen-only mode. Well, I mean, gr so? Then they would just use that information to go to the press. Belly button. We can give you everything you're seeing from the FBI and USIC agencies, Chan explained, but the DHS agency, CISA, will know what's going on in each state. He went on to ask if industry could rely on the FBI to be the belly button of the USG. They eventually settled on an industry called call via signal. Ooh, interesting why they used the signal, huh? In an impressive display of operational security, Chan circulated private numbers of each of the company's chief moderation officers in a Word document marked signal phone numbers, subject line, list of numbers. Twitter was taking requests from every conceivable government body, beginning with the Senate Intel Committee, which seemed to need reassurance that Twitter was taking FBI direction. Execs rushed in to tell Team SSCI they zapped five accounts on an FBI tip. Yeah! Yeah! Suck it, Americans. Make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a huge more fallout tomorrow for sure. Requests arrived and were escalated from all over the place. Treasury, the NSA, virtually every state, the HHS, the FBI, the DHS, and more. They all received an astonishing variety of requests from officials asking for individuals they didn't like to be banned. Here are the Office for Democrat and House Intel Committee Adam Schiff Asked Twitter ban a journalist. 
Oh, now maybe they'll take, maybe now they'll take some interest in it. We don't do this. Even Twitter declined to honor Schiff's request at the time. Sperry was later suspended, however. So somebody did, right? Twitter honored almost everyone else's requests, including those from GEC, including a decision to ban accounts like Rebel Protests and Bricks Media, which are still suspended to this day. Because GEC identified them as GRU controlled and linked to the Russian government, just because they identified them as that. The GEC requests were what a former CIA staffer working at Twitter was referring to when he said, our window on this is closing, meaning they had days when Twitter could say no to serious requests were over, the day where they could say no. Remember the 2017 internal guidance in which Twitter decided to remove any user identified by the U.S. intelligence community as a state-sponsored entity committing cyber operations? By 2020, such identifications came in bulk. USIC requests often simply said, we assess, and then provided lists, sometimes in separate Excel documents. They believe were connected to Russian internet searches committing cyber ops from Africa to South Africa to the United States. Based on what? Brief, one brief report sent right after Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine early last year flagged major Russian outlets like Vedomosti and Gazette, Gazetta.ru Note the language about, quote, state actors fits Twitter's internal guidance. Some reports were just paragraph long and said things like, the attached email accounts were possibly used for influence operations, social media collection, or social engineering. Without further explanation, Twitter would be forwarded an Excel document. They were even warned about publicly surrounding a book by a former UK prosecutor who alleged corruption in the U.S. government, specifically by Joe Biden. The weeks before the election in 2020, Twitter was so confused by the various streams of incoming requests, staffers had to ask the FBI which was which. I apologize in advance for your workload. Requests poured in from the FBI offices all over the country, day after day, hour after hour. If Twitter didn't act quickly, questions came. What action was taken? Any movement? Do it now. Do it now. Wrote Senator St St Senior Attorney sorry, Stacey Car Cartier, my inbox is really effed up at this point. It all led to the situation described by Schellenberg, Michael Schellenberger two weeks ago in which Twitter was paid $3.4 million essentially for being an overwhelmed subcontractor. Twitter wasn't just paid for the amount of work they did for the government. They were underpaid. Wow. I hope you're paying attention. I hope you're still sharing it. Things are heating up. Essentially, if you if you if you had any kind of free thought about the coup, they were just calling you a Russian asset and getting you banned immediately. Why was the FBI doing this? There are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Make sure you subscribe down below. You leave a like on this and you share the video so we can break it all down and we can keep this information flowing freely to people who need to know. Thank you.